Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Christian. I'm a spiritual mentor. All of my content here is about healing you and helping you reach your highest self. If it's your first time seeing me, go ahead and like this video because I know you're going to like it already. Subscribe and turn on those post notifications so you never miss another upload. And if you already are subscribed, hello babies, welcome back. So today guys, we are going to be continuing the How to Know series. And this video is going to be titled How to Know When It's Time to Get a New Friend Group, How to Know When Your Friends Aren't Serving You Anymore, just some things to be on the lookout for whenever you feel it's time for a switch up. I feel like whenever we're in a space of wanting a new friend group, there's so many different things that we think about. Like if these friends don't serve me anymore, should I cut them off completely? Or could I still drink with them and go to the club with them and, you know, hang out with them from time to time? Or do I need to have spiritual friends that can support me through my spiritual journey? And then when I'm doing other stuff, I have friends that support me through the other stuff that I'm doing. Or do I need to, you know, just cut everybody off? Is it okay for me to compartmentalize will I still be tempted to you know step into my old habits and things like that if I have these people around me or not so there's a lot of different things that goes into you know how you should move and how you should navigate the question of how do you know when it's time to switch your friend group around so let's go ahead and get into the video guys so regardless if you feel it's time for a new friend group because you're going through a spiritual awakening, you're moving to a new place, you know, you're trying to break off of an unhealthy habit or an addiction even, you're trying to, you know, cut ties with a certain type of energy or a certain type of person, whatever the case may be, you know, there's a lot of different reasons that we transition into different people with different needs. And I feel having different needs is really the basis of needing a different type of friend group, you know, realistically speaking, if our needs were the same throughout our entire life you really could keep those same friends that you started out life with you know you wouldn't really need anything else you would really be satisfied but because we are always changing we're always growing our needs change a lot as well and I feel like in life maybe your needs don't necessarily change but I feel we get into a lot of friendships because we think it's what we need but in the end we realize this wasn't what I need this is what I need so I feel like we can even sometimes be confused about what our needs are in friendship where we make friends because maybe we're both entrepreneurs or we're both on our natural hair journey or we're both trying to be content creators or we're both, you know, new to the city. We're both starting this new job at the same time. You know, there's so many different random reasons why we make friends. And I feel like when it gets down to the nitty gritty, when it gets down to real life, none of that stuff really matters. You know, what matters is will you have what you need in those most important moments? And I feel when you're very vulnerable, when you're in spaces where you're feeling depressed, anxious, confused, you need your support system to be able to, you know, lean on. You need people that can push you forward. When you don't have the strength to pray for yourself, you need somebody to be like, hey, it's okay. Imagine if you have a big problem with self-doubt, you know, but you're very, very successful. It's just about having a good support system behind you that can push you forward. But typically on a day-to-day, -day, you deal with a lot of self-doubt. Imagine if you had a friend in your life that, you know, you told them about a problem and instead of offering solutions or, you know, them trying to help you de-stress or them trying to help you get in a better mindset all they talk about is oh my god are you sure that happened oh my god that's terrible what are you gonna do oh my god oh my god oh my god as if you weren't already gonna be anxious enough about it now you have somebody that's feeding into the worst parts of your subconscious so I feel that's a big red flag to know it's time for a new friend group do the people around you feed into the worst parts of your subconscious do they feed into your ego do they feed into your insecurities do they feed into your jealousy you know do they sit around and talk about people so that makes you feel like you have to sit around and talk about people you're trying to get away from that kind of activity but whenever you're around them that's the only topic of discussion what other people have going on and putting down everybody else so just because of habit and you know they're in your space whenever you're with them you're gonna fall back into those old swings or like most people if you're trying to stop drinking and you have friends where all y'all do is drink. You go to brunch, it has to have, you know, bottomless mimosas. You go to dinner, there has to be really good, really cheap cocktails. If you go to any function, any dinner, any game night, there has to be liquor. It has to be flowing, which is not a bad thing, you know. None of these people that you want to cut off 
well, unless they're just bad, mean people. But a lot of the times, the friends that you want to let go of aren't necessarily bad people because they don't serve you anymore. It could just be whatever activity they're getting into could serve a lower party that you're trying to get away from. Even if you have like a stealing problem or something, or you have a problem with spending too much money and you have friends that all they want to do is shop. All they want to do is shop, 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 shop. And maybe they could do it in a healthy way, or maybe they have an excess of money so they can spend a lot. And you're just not in that place right now. You're trying to budget. You're trying to get healthier with your money. You're trying to make sure you're being more smart with it, more responsible. Having someone in your life where that's all they want to do, they can't be interested in anything else, they can't seem to have time for anything else, that might not be the best person to have in your life. Now, does that mean that you need to totally cut them off and remove them? No. That's why I said, you know, sometimes it can be confusing because it's like, this person doesn't serve me anymore, but what does that mean? I think the first thing you should always do when you realize a friendship isn't serving you is to have a conversation. Now, if you have that conversation with them and you see that it's still the same, that's when you know for a fact, another red flag, this friendship is not serving you anymore. A key, key, key thing to let you know that friendships can serve you for the long run is if they're able to grow with you. If you hit a stagnant space with a friendship and it just goes straight downhill, if you guys are not able to move past an issue, a disagreement, a cold spell, because sometimes in friendships, you might just lose touch with somebody for a couple months or even a couple of years you know I've lost touch of people for a really long time and we were able to just reach out to each other and get the conversation back going like nothing ever happened you know there are certain people that you don't have to talk to every day every week or every year even so I think it's important to understand can this relationship you know transform am I seeing this person that no longer serves me am I seeing them growing am I seeing them expanding am I seeing them do the work because if I'm seeing them work on themselves and hey maybe I can see them you know working on our relationship and bettering our relationship. Also, if you are transitioning to a different part of your life where you have certain values that are really, really core values for you, if you have friends in your current friend group or current circle or proximity, whatever, if you have people around you that do not adhere to those um, principles, if you have people that don't believe in those principles, you really want to ask yourself, are these new principles what I really want in my life? Because if I really want it in my life, I might have to remove myself from these friends. Now, it could be really, really extreme. Like, let's say you start to, you know, begin a spiritual practice that's really, really strict. And you don't want to be around people who are maybe abusing substances or not taking care of themselves. Or, you know, if people are in very toxic relationships and they don't want to leave. If people have bad habits and they just keep doing them. Some people are just toxic, you know. So if you know that you are trying to leave the toxic version of you behind and rebuild a new version of you. And the people around you, you know for a fact that they are not going to change they're not going to budge they're going to stay where they are then you have to ask yourself are my principles worth me starting over because a lot of times you do have to start over especially when you develop principles that say I'm not going to lie anymore I'm not gonna gossip anymore I'm not going to hide my feelings about a friend I'm not going to hold my tongue when it's time for me to apologize I'm not gonna hold my tongue when it's time for me to express myself if you're the type of friend that never speaks up never has a problem never says anything the first time you speak up Whoever you speak up to, they might not be so willing to hear what you have to say because you never speak up. So you've already established a relationship with them that lets them know I can really say what I want and do what I want because this person isn't going to speak up. Now, you can be in that situation with a friend or you can be in another situation where you speak up and you have a friend that's like, yes, I'm very happy that you started speaking up, girl. I was wondering how long it was going to take you to start speaking up, you know? So when you see how people respond to the new version of you, I think that also lets you know if you can have people in your life or not. If you have friends that are trying to clown you for meditating, clown you for going back to school, clown you for being abstinent or you know wanting to not go out anymore and not wanting to drink anymore like a friend that really loves you is going to want you to step into the best version of yourself so whenever you are trying to begin new things and create you know new avenues for yourself if you have people in your life that are you know down talking you for wanting to treat yourself in a healthy way or you know they they laughing at you for wanting to be vegan or wanting to stop smoking or wanting to stop drinking or wanting to start going to church you know like they're talking about you or cracking on it or every time you bring them going to the gym they joke about how you never gonna be able to you know stick with it because oh remember that challenge that you did girl well you didn't commit to that you know that lets you know that those aren't people that you cannot grow with and like I said they're not bad people they just need to be with their sect of people that aren't going to be growing and I guarantee you eventually Everybody in a situation like that, you're either going to grow and have to venture off on your own out of that situation, and eventually everybody will just be off doing their own thing, or you guys are going to grow together, period. You're either going to grow together or grow apart, and I think that's why it's really important to 
not try and hold friend groups together. And this is something that I'm really, really learning too. It's going to be really, really hard to find a group of five, four, even three people, to be honest, that are all growing at a continuous, always in alignment type of rate because we all go through different things. We experience love, grief, winning, losing, you know, hate for ourselves, impatience, jealousy. We deal with our ego, we deal with our inner child, we deal with past trauma, PTSD, you know, family issues, you know, relationship drama, stuff at work. Like we all have so much stuff that we're dealing with. It's so difficult to maintain who you are as a person. A lot of people lose themselves and a lot of things in this world. So it's difficult to maintain who you are as a person just in itself. But then maintain who you are as a good person and maintain who you are as a good person that is consistently evolving. Like the group gets shorter and shorter and shorter. The list gets shorter and shorter and shorter, you know, in terms of how many people can fit the bill. So you not, might not be able to find seven people like you did in college that can align with you because you're looking for a more specific thing. And there's nothing wrong with that. You know, there's nothing wrong with it. I also feel it's always a red flag when your intuition is telling you be mindful of this or this isn't right. You know, I had a lot of scenarios and friend groups in college and friend groups even after college where something happened or something was done or somebody said something a certain way and my intuition was just going off like, mm -mm, this ain't right, this ain't right, this ain't right. Now, typically when I get a feeling or a vibe that something ain't right, it's typically the energy to let me know I probably won't be able to fix this or there's something deeper going on here. Because let's just say, for example, the gossiping thing. If you are one person in a group of six people and you guys always, you know, spill everybody's tea, you get together, you talk about the tea, everything that's going on in your city, on social media, whatever, whatever, whatever. You guys never really talk about what you have going on. You guys never really talk about your lives or your goals. It's always about other people. If you, one person, decides to say, hey, guys, let's talk about our goals this time. Let's just have a goal party where all we talk about is goals. Like, that's it. That's it. And if anybody brings up any drama about anybody else, they have to put like a dollar in a jar or something and whoever you know goes the whole night without bringing up anybody else's business they get to take the jar home or some shit you know like if you're the one person that's like hey guys let's do something different you might have a few people that are like mm, okay maybe but you're gonna have a couple of people that are like absolutely not now what's gonna be up to those people that are like mm, maybe for you to understand if they're going to you know follow your lead and try to do different or if they're going to continue to stay with, you know, what everybody else is doing and keep doing the same thing, which is what's comfortable to them, which is what's normal to them. So the majority of the time, if you're the only person in a friend group that's trying to have a completely different lifestyle and make a 180 change, you might be doing that on your own. You might be doing that on your own. And that's not a bad thing. That's why I always talk about online community and finding people that you can relate to everywhere in the world, because this is a journey that some of us take on our own. You know, the journey to being the best version of yourself can definitely be a lonely one, especially when you've had a certain amount of people in your life for reasons that do not resonate with who you are today. You know, like I said before in past videos, we make friends because of proximity and happenstance, because we're near each other, because we just so happen to meet or be in the same class. But when it really, really, really comes down to it, you know, do the people in your life support the best version of you or do they cater and promote the lowest parts of you that you're trying to leave behind? And I feel we all have good and bad in us, of course. So I think it's also important to ask yourself if you can accept the fatal flaws of the people in your group and if your feelings about those fatal flaws start to change. Let's say something in a group, you have a person in a group that has a problem with sleeping with people's exes or sleeping with people that you know somebody maybe used to deal with in the past right this is what they do they just always mess with somebody that somebody else has dealt with and if you have a friend like that or if you know somebody like that or have somebody in your family then you know they always with somebody man they always with somebody woman they always with somebody somebody else and maybe at one point you didn't care about it it wasn't that big of a deal but you become married or you get into another relationship or you break off, you know, something with a long term, you know, person that you are with for a really, really long time. And you see, you know, this person starting to get close to them and it really, really affects you. It bothers you because now you're on the other side of that fatal flaw. So a little sidebar, guys, not to say that I think, you know, a friend dating with people's exes. I don't think that's just a little fatal flaw. I think that's a major total red flag. Can't do it. Absolutely not. But my whole point of using that example was everybody has one thing that they do and you may wish that they wouldn't have done it or it always bothers you a little bit. But because you keep a certain distance between you and that thing, that issue, that problem, it doesn't affect you, but that won't last forever. 
important to realize if you are a friend of someone, you are eventually going to be on the other side of their fatal flaw. Whatever that is, it eventually is going to affect you. So you have to ask yourself, is this something that I can live with? Is this something that I'm still able to forgive and move past? Because if it isn't, and I'm realizing that I'm growing to a point where I can't tolerate that or that isn't aligning with me, let me have a conversation with my friends so I can let them know, hey, I know we've been friends for a very long time. I know I typically don't say anything about this, but I'm stepping into a new space. I'm stepping into a new environment. I need different things. You know, when I'm around you, when you do stuff like this, it stresses me out. It makes me feel away. Like, how can we serve each other better? How can we better be, how can we be better friends for each other? That's how I always communicate to somebody when we're not able to connect because it's not just about you giving me what I need. As a friend, I have to give you what you need as well. I have to give you what you need as well. So let's say, for example, you know, like let's swap the situation with a friend that's always dating people exes. Let's say you have a friend that be taking people's business ideas. Like somebody mentions, oh, I want to do this for my birthday. And you have a friend that just takes the idea. Or, oh, I want to have this kind of wedding. Or, oh, I want to, you know, have this kind of business. And you have somebody in your group that just always takes pieces of what everybody else has to say. How can you as a friend make this person feel more confident in their own ideas? Are they open to being made more confident? Because sometimes you can pour into somebody and it won't even matter because they're not even ready for that exchange yet. So it's important to ask yourself, do I have what it takes to be a better friend to this person? Can we both serve each other more? Or have we gotten to a point where there's nothing else I can give them and there's nothing else that they can give me? And that is a space that we reach sometimes in friendship. And it's not a horrible space to be in. You know, you can always move forward from friendships, you know, in love and happiness. But communication is key. Like, whenever you feel someone isn't serving you, have a conversation with them. Let them know. How do you feel about this relationship? What goals do you have for yourself in, your, in the future? Do you feel, you and me, do you feel our connection is going to help you meet, meet those goals or do you feel like our connection is kind of like keeping you stagnant like do you feel you know after talking with me or hanging with me do you feel good do you not feel good do you get anxiety when it comes to hanging with me like I want to know how our connection affects you in your day-to-day -day. and if it doesn't have any effect on you and are you okay with that are you okay with you know being connected with someone that has no effect on you at all doesn't make you better doesn't make you worse doesn't really add or take anything away some people don't care some people are really looking for people to you know benefit them and help them and elevate them some people are just looking for you know seat fillers in their life and you also have others who are looking for friends that want to heal them and help them and if they can't learn something from a friend they don't even want them in their circle and I mean for real like if you don't have another uh, more money than them a bigger degree than them you're not more established than them you're not more experienced than them they're just like hey I don't know what I can offer you because they want people they can learn from and in turn they might be able to teach you something as well so I think it's also important you know something else you guys can do when you're in a space of should I leave my friends or not? Literally write down the type of connections you're looking for right now. Write down what you need in a friend right now and ask yourself if you're getting that from the current people that are around you. Just ask yourself if they're giving you those things. And if they're not, then start having those conversations. If you want to do something different with the group, like you want to plan like a yoga day for everybody, or you want to plan, you know, maybe a book exchange where everybody brings one book and you guys all, you know, like swap books and you have a brunch where you can kind of talk about what you've read, you know, recommend going on a hike together, recommend just having like a movie night or event session, you know, a time where you guys can come together and have a girl chat or a sister circle. You know, if you want the people in your life to heal, to elevate, to grow, sometimes you have to be the one to set the tone. Sometimes you have to be the one to lead the way. Now, everybody is not going to want to follow that. Everybody isn't going to enjoy that. But you will have some people in your life where they'll feel like, dang, I've been waiting to read more books. I've been waiting to invent. I've been waiting to have a girl chat. I just didn't feel comfortable setting it up myself. Thank you for doing this. I appreciate this. This is exactly what I needed, you know? So don't underestimate the power that you have to cultivate the kind of relationships you want. You definitely have the ability to set up the events you want, do the stuff you want. I also think you should hang out with yourself a lot more if you're trying to decide if your friend group is serving you. Um, think about the relationship you have with you and how you serve you. How do you serve you on a very, very basic level? Cleaning up after yourself, taking care of yourself, cooking for yourself, feeding yourself, making sure you feel good, making sure you feel satisfied when you're having a rough day. Do you take it easy on yourself? Do you like to push yourself? You know, think about how you treat you and ask yourself, you know, how the people in your life can add to that. Or are they undoing the work that you're doing? Are you building yourself up every day and then you go see a certain friend and they tear you down? Are you motivating yourself every day and then when you go to a certain, see a certain friend, y'all are supposed to do business stuff, but it turns into no business, all play, all games, all jokes. Um, and it's just not what you need right now. And like I said, 
we all will have different types of friends that serve us in different ways. It's important to figure out how someone can serve you being themselves. It's important to not have a certain template like, I need a friend that prays three times a day, that's vegan, that does yoga, that works out, that does this, that does this, that does this. Because you might not find a lot of people that fit that bill. You know, you might find someone that doesn't check off any of those boxes, but their spirit speaks to yours. So don't be too caught up in the spiritual shit or this fitness shit or this health kick soft life luxury girl aesthetic don't be too caught up in that shit and feel like just because someone on the outside looks like they could connect with you and they look like they could resonate with you don't be too caught up in that and feel like oh great this is what i'm gonna build a friendship off of because a friendship a connection your chosen family is way 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 more important than literally just me and you liking the same thing so make sure that when you're creating friendships as well that you have deeper things in mind that you're being mindful of the type of relationships that you want to create and you know don't be too hard on yourself when you think about the relationships in the past you know don't be too hard on yourself whenever you focus on you know how you made some of these connections with little to no thought allow yourself to grow allow yourself to expand allow yourself to meet different people that show you different things and everybody doesn't have to be your friend you know everybody doesn't have to be your friend like i feel right now i'm really in a period of meeting people and i might not necessarily we might not be talking in three or four years, but everybody you meet doesn't have to be in your life forever. You know, you can meet somebody and they can serve you and make you feel good for six months, seven months, eight months, and then you guys can support each other, you know, just online. Like when I was in Atlanta, and I was only in Atlanta for six months. I met a lot of great people that I saw all the time. I hung out with all the time. I kicked it with them all the time. I don't really, you know, see them that much or, you know, talk to them that much anymore. But I follow everybody on social media. I always support them. They always support me. I love to see them doing good. And I always tell them how proud I am of them. And they always do the same thing for me and motivate me. So sometimes you can share a short period of, sometimes you can share a short moment in your life with somebody and they can kind of really go on to, you know, bless you and send you those beautiful, you know, high vibe energies even from afar so really challenge yourself to feel differently about friendship and you know make better connections that are going to be serving you better in the long run and again keep in mind what you need keep in mind what you need give people a lot of grace you know don't feel like someone has to like i said check off all of these perfect boxes to be the person that you need to serve you because you also are going to come across people that test you people that test your patience test your jealousy test your anger test you and see hey have you really changed have you really grown you know can you really be a good friend or are you still dealing with stuff from the past because remember we have to do a lot of growing and a lot of changing ourselves to even be worthy of soul partners soul family you know life partners these spirit connections are it's a high spiritual price to pay to find your life partner and be able to do the rest of your life with somebody if you found your life partner you have to be somebody that has done a lot of spiritual work or you got to be ready for a lot of spiritual work and a lot of people are not like that's why i feel like a lot of people are on this journey solo because adding other people in it just gives you another level of responsibility that you will not believe like if you're supposed to be doing shadow work yeah you do your shadow work when you're on your own let you get a partner. Let you get children. Let you, you know, start running a business and having to work with people. You won't be able to not keep your shadow in check. It becomes mandatory to do the shadow work. Mandatory. Let's say, for example, you have a lot of ancestral stuff about friendships and, you know, making connections. It will become mandatory for you to do that work. And if you don't, your relationships will crumble. Your relationships will crumble. If you don't deal with that jealousy, get in some relationships. It will crumble. Because the people that are in your life, like I said, y'all, love is the what? It is the greatest vehicle for change. You get some real love in your life, it will change you. It will crack you. It will mold you. It will bring up a new version of you that is loved. Like when you are put together by love, there is no insecurity. There is no pain. There is no doubt. There is no confusion. And whenever you feel that, it feels so foreign to you. You don't even recognize it because you've been living in love. So when you feel that, you're like, girl, wait, what is this? Let me call my friends. Let me call my partner. Let me call somebody that can motivate me because I know this anxiety I'm feeling right now cannot be me. And then what do they do? Girl, don't worry about this. You know God got you. You know what's all going to work out in your favor. They inspire you. They motivate you. They give you that energy that you need and that keeps you on track. So having the right people in your life literally makes a world, a world, a world, a world of a difference. Um, if you guys are interested in online community, you can check us out on Instagram at Sacred Solidarity. The link in the bio, there is a link to a group meet where you guys can check out um, a group chat if you guys are interested. But yes, guys, that is how to know if it's time to step into a new friend group and some things to be thinking about if you are looking to transition into a new friend group or just meet some new people. 
But yes, guys, I appreciate y'all. I thank you guys for being here. Let me know how you felt about this video. Comment down below. Of course, you can book private sessions with me and connect with me by checking out the links in the description box. I love you guys, and I thank y'all, and I will see you guys next time as always. Bye, guys. Bless.